I want to point out something um, with this line that we just graphed using the table of values. What I want to point out is this point right here. This is the y-intercept, the point where it goes through this y-axis. It is negative 4. And I'd like to point out that we've seen that negative 4 somewhere else, and that is right here in this equation. When your equation is written with y all by itself on this side, this number by itself here is the y-intercept. Now I'd also like to point out that in between any of these points here, to get from one point to the next point, I have to rise 2 and go forward 3. Now that forward 3 we actually call the run. So I'm rising 2 and running 3. That is what we call the slope. We give it the symbol M, and slope is rise over run. Now I have to go up 2 and forward 3. If I go up 2 and forward 3 again, I get to the next point. Up 2, forward 3, I get to the next point. So our slope is our rise, how far I went up, over how far I went forward, 2 over 3. And I'd also like to point out that we've seen that number before. When the equation is written with the y all by itself on this side of the equation, the number in front of x, its coefficient, gives us slope. And oftentimes you will hear this as being given to us in y equals mx plus b form, where m stands for slope and b stands for the y-intercept. This becomes very useful when trying to graph a line if it's given to us in slope y-intercept form. I have three equations here that are given to us in slope y-intercept form. Let's look at the first one. y equals 1 half x minus 2. As I said before, this number that's all by itself right here in this equation minus 2 tells us where it crosses the y-axis. So I know if I go to the y-axis, and this is the y-axis, the one that goes straight up and down, the horizontal one is the x-axis. On the y-axis, I'm going to go where it's negative 2, and I know that this line has to go through that point because this tells me it's the y-intercept. Now, this number here tells me how I can move away from this point that I just plotted because it's the slope, and slope is rise over run. So I can rise 1 and run 2. Rise 1 and run 2. Rise 1 and run 2. I can do that as many times as I want, and you'll notice that I'm getting a very straight line here. So I can join the point. And I have my line graphed. No table of values necessary. So this is my first equation. I'm going to label it down here. y equals 1 half x minus 2. Now the second equation that I have here You'll notice that um, the y-intercept, again, the number all by itself, is plus 4. So I go on the y-axis, I go to plus 4, and I put a dot. And this number here in front of x is the slope. It tells me how I can move away from this dot. Now, slope is given as rise over run. This is just the number 3, but we understand that any whole number actually has a denominator of 1. So what we have here is a rise of 3 and a run of 1. So from this dot that I plotted on the y-axis, I'm going to go up 3, a rise of 3, 1, 2, 3, and I'm going to run 1 space. Now I could do that as many times as I want to, but it's already almost off my grid, and honestly, you really only need two points to graph a straight line. So I'm going to join those points. 
actually draw a line through the point, a nice long line through those points. And there is my second equation, y equals 3x plus 4. Now lastly, my equation written here in blue, it has a y-intercept, this number out here, all by itself is 5. I'm going to go to 5 on the y-axis and put my dot. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, there's the y-intercept. Now since this number is negative, let's think of this as being a negative rise, which means instead of going up, I'm going to go down. So the negative goes with the 1, and I go down 1, and the run always forward goes forward 3 spaces. 1, 2, 3, and there is my second point. I can go down 1 and forward 3 again and get another point. That just helps me, if the points are farther apart, it helps me get my line a little bit more accurate when I'm drawing it. And I'll draw a line through those points, and I have my third line. Y equals negative one-third X plus five. Now I know I have achieved a negative slope because as I look at this going left to right, it's going down. Where the other two that had a positive slope, when I look at them going left to right, the green one goes up and the black one goes up. You always read a graph going left to right. Down is a negative slope, up is a positive slope. So you can see it is much faster to graph a line using slope and the y-intercept in the equation.